What if you could learn from physical product entrepreneurs that have risen up from the trenches to dominating their market by creating successful physical product brands? Well, this podcast is hosted by me, Kunai Campbell, and it's about breaking the mold to becoming a smarter, savvier, and better product entrepreneur. You discover how to take physical products from concept through launch and to scaling up from physical product entrepreneurs who've taken their revolutionary ideas to 1 million, 10 million, and 50 million plus in revenue businesses. You'll also join me on my journey to build a million dollar physical product brand business in a year, where we both will learn about crowdfunding, selling to retail chains, launching through marketplaces like Amazon, strategic partnerships, publicity, celebrity endorsements, and selling direct to consumers. So if you're creating or building a brand in the consumer packaged goods space, in fashion and apparel, business products, or any physical product niche, listen in because we have you covered. Join the fast track to physical product business success. This is the Physical Product Business Podcast. I'm Kune Campbell. Let's get rolling. Hi guys, welcome to the Physical Product Business Podcast and today I'm joined with by a millennial serial entrepreneur. His name is Nick Warrender and he's only 26. He's building a fast growth e-cigarette business around e-liquids and you're just two years old I think. Just, yes, a little one, two years. Okay, we're coming up on our on our second year. Okay, I'm I'm not going to do justice introducing you. So I would first of all like to welcome you to the show, Nick. And could you, you take a minute or so to introduce yourself? Yes, yes. Like you said, my name is Nick Warner. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Welcome. I'm the founder and CEO of Lifted Manufacturing, an e-liquid company based out of Bristol, Wisconsin, USA. Awesome, fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so let's let's kind of like talk about lifted manufacturing and lifted liquids, because I you, you have mentioned lifted liquids in the past, and you you is there any difference, or could you sort of clarify? Yeah, so lifted manufacturing is our laboratory manufacturing facility where we not only make lifted liquids, which was our first product, um, we also make eight other brands. Uh, That includes other brands of our own, as well as white label brands that we produce for other clients. Okay, 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 okay. Got you. And what is the main part of your business, the the liquids or the manufacturing? Um, They they really go hand in hand. Uh, The manufacturing is is really bumped up since we've been able to bring on some of these white label jobs Mm -hmm. rather than producing our own liquids and then having a sales force selling those liquids. We have the ability to keep production rolling constantly, whether it's fulfilling our current brands or fulfilling other clients. um, It's really turned into a manufacturing facility for all e-liquids and we're able to offer our services that we have done for our own products now to other companies as well. Okay. Sounds, sounds, sounds interesting. Okay. Um, Let's track back to, 2015 you had 900 to invest 900 dollars to invest in this business what are revenues looking like today in 2016 we're we're in november 2016 what are revenues looking like so yeah back in 2015 um, i started this business i had a full-time job i had a little bit of money to invest and i went into this with a really good friend of mine Um, unfortunately I passed away and that really ignited a flame for me to take this on full. Uh, I quit my full-time job. I went all in and today, um, we do about six figures a month. Uh, so we've, we've really been able to fulfill his dream. Um, and this was something that he, you know, believed in full heartedly. So it's been an honor to carry on this other man's dream. And, and carry on his legacy as well for himself and his family. So um, this, you know, this this turned much more into a, a personal endeavor and experience into finding out what life is more about and finding myself along the way and to create a successful business and as the outcome has uh, been fulfilling. I can imagine. I can imagine. And um, so when, when you lost your friend, um, did you have any employees at the time? Did, did did it feel very lonely? I'm just trying to picture you at the time when you know when when the tragedy occurred. Yeah, uh, when the tragedy occurred, I actually um, I had a vacation planned, and this happened the day before 
uh, I left for vacation. And I feel like there was a higher power looking out for me to be able to take me away from this and um, be able to strategize from a, a place that wasn't home mm-hmm. and a place that I didn't have to feel the full impact. Right. So coming back from that, I was by myself. I had no money. Um, I had no facility. I was working out of a small closet in my parents' house. And I was able to produce enough units to get our first client. Uh, so I was the chemist. I was the production team. I was the marketing team. I was the sales force. I was the graphic designer. I was the web developer. I was the customer service. Uh, so it was a one-man show at first. And throughout that process, you know, once again, I learned a lot about myself. And what it took to, to be successful was, you know, this burning desire to succeed. Right. And coach, coachability to be able to learn from other people and be able to yeah. accept criticism and input. Um, and finally, you know, it was a desire to to be able to create something more and bigger than myself. Right. And that's what really pushed me into getting, you know, more employees and be able to offer positions to people that were in a similar position. You know, I came out of college. It was a really small workforce. There wasn't a lot of opportunity. Right. I was in massive amounts of debt. And... You know, I saw a lot of my brothers and sisters in the same position, a lot of right. my really good friends in the same position, right. very brilliant people, right. lack of opportunity. Um, so to be able to transform it from a one man team to now five, six individuals in production, right. outside sales forces, marketing teams, uh, it's, it's been insane, you know, in, in an aspect to, to watch it blossom into what it is today and how, you know, small daily tasks can turn into such large things right. and time really doesn't have a place in that you yeah. know um it grows as much as you're ready for it yeah and i think that that was really important to kind of strip away everything and, and look at myself and say okay what do i have to do to get this bigger because it's mm-hmm. going to start with me it's going to start with the foundation and what i believe and where we can go from there uh so it's it's been about growing a business but also growing as an individual and you know you get to where you're ready to go um, and when you're not ready for it, you realize what you need to change to be able to adapt to take it to the next level and to be able to take on what the next level looks like. Did, did you did you stumble on any mentors in, in your journey thus far since 2015? Yeah, I, I have, and I think it's also important um, to talk to, to briefly talk about you know the losses along the way. You know, I, a lot of people that didn't understand why I was never around coming out on the weekends and partying and seeing everybody and living, you know, a 25 year old life. Mm. Uh, so I had lost a lot of people that I thought were friends and, you know, that was tough. Uh, you, you think that people understand, you know, man, this guy's working 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, seven days a week. Right. Um, but they took it much more personal. Um, throughout that process, I was able to meet much more older people that were able to see where I was at and feel where I was at and the appreciation and respect that was gained through that connection and that relationship Mm -hmm. really helped me get through the downfalls and the negative impact of a lot of people leaving my side and not Mm -hmm. wanting to be friends and taking it personal that I wasn't always there for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was this balance where, you know, you kind of shed your own old skin to be able to grow a new one. Um, and that was that was huge. You know, my father, he's been a huge mentor for me. He came from nothing and he started his own business as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to see him day in and day out, be consistent through the good times, the bad mm-hmm. times when business is flourishing and when it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, so that consistency factor is huge in all aspects of it, whether it's, you know, in relation to mentors and people mm-hmm. or, you know, your business, your supply chain and everything throughout that. Um, mm-hmm. It really is a key point. Okay. Let's track back. Um, to 2015 again um, when in, in 2015 we're, we're in November of 2016 um, was it the, at the start of 2015 you, you, you had the $900 to hand and decided to go all in with, with, with lifted manufacturing yeah this was in April in 2015 a lot has happened a lot has happened in April well done I mean, yeah, it's, yeah it's barely 18 it, months and you know you, right You've yeah, done, you've done about. you've done a lot. You've you have you have you have you have done a lot. Okay, so Thank you. um let, let, let's talk about your first shipment, your first order. What did it look like? Could you could you take us back? You said you 
you're, you're a jack of all trades. You, you did the packing. You did the, the, the you're the chemist. You're the marketer. You're, you're the designer. You're, you're everything. So let's go back. That must probably in the in the in the big scheme of things been the most difficult part. You know, actually getting started. So how did you sort of decide what man? How did you get the first order? Yeah. So um, as this business kind of started, there was an industry uproar. I mean. Uh, vape shops and e-liquid retailers were popping up everywhere. Mm. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, I've, even from nail salons and other retail businesses that that pop up, even like mobile phone repairs, mm. um, you see those popping up. But I had never seen anything quite like what I had saw with with vape shops. Right. So it was a local shop that um, I had found. Uh, I, I stepped in there, and I'll never forget this man. He. He believed in my vision. Mm-hmm. Um, he saw not only where we were at that day, but where we were headed. So at the time, it wasn't a well-polished product. You know, we've upgraded our product. We've upgraded our packaging a lot since then. Um, but the inside was the same. And I think, you know, that's a lot like inside individuals. Is the same. Mm. It's a lot like individuals. You know, you're, you're out, you're inside. The pureness of your inside is there, but... How you translate that outside, you know, changes over time. It could be rough, able... but yeah, that core. Yeah. Exactly. So um, it was a consignment deal. You know, it was one of those deals where it was put your money where your mouth is. Right. So that's what I did. Um, I put all of my money where my mouth was. I right. put all of an initial product stock in their store on a consignment deal, and they gave us that opportunity. Um, and that was the greatest opportunity anybody's ever really given me. I can't imagine. So, so what's your background? Are, are, you, are you a chemist and, you know, but are you a trained chemist from university or school or, yeah, what, could you, how did you sort of manufacture your first e-liquid, that, that first order? Yeah. So, um, I don't have a chemistry background. Right. Uh, I did enjoy chemistry in high school. Um, I, I went to college. I started as a biology major. I finished as a communication major. So I ended up on the whole different end of the spectrum but uh, our, our core flavor recipes were designed by my friend. So they stayed alive throughout that process. And, you know, he left me with those recipes that I could then study and learn, you know, how we're able to get these formulas and how we're able to get certain flavors. Because, right. you know, we were dealing with simple flavors, but it could be a strawberry flavor and have seven different concentrates in it to give it an authentic taste. Taste. Um, so it was a gift that was basically left behind for me right. through that process. And, you know, today we're able to have on somebody that really knows chemistry and really knows okay. um, why things are able to do what they're doing. Okay. Uh, before before it was more of a what, what were we doing? And so, now it's more about why. Why? It's a why. So, so how many recipes did you start the business out with? We started out with 10 recipes. Okay. Um, now we have over 30. Okay. Okay. It makes sense. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. And then, um, from that initial order, um, is, is that first customer still your customer today? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Good, good, good. So you got repeat business there. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense now. So you got your first order and how did you scale to the first 100 orders? Um, and I suppose, we need to before before we we answer that question. We need to kind of understand um, the structure of the business. It, it's half, or it's part wholesale and part direct to consumer. Is is that correct? How how how's how's business split across the board? Yeah, so it's um, we really push equal amounts of both um, okay. because when you look at the different facets of business as a manufacturer, you know you have your distribution, you have your wholesale, you have your retail. Each one of those sides has a different profit margin. So our direct distribution, which is high volume, is a much smaller profit margin. So you know we really wanted to focus on self distribution to kind of cut out the largest middleman, and then also sell direct to consumer to balance out our overall profit margin and keep mm-hmm. it very healthy. Um, you know because we didn't have massive venture capital to be able to market at first, it kind of worked on our benefit. Because we were able to build those connections and those relations and actually do that work and have a much larger profit margin. Right. Okay. 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 So, um, okay. So, but they're two totally different 
facets and they take two totally different strategies. I can imagine. You know, but, I right. can imagine. I can imagine. Okay, so so how did you get your first well, your next set of clients? How did you scale from that one customer which definitely gave you a lot of confidence to 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 go to to further go all in? Um so how did you get the the next batch of customers? Was it easier or just as difficult? It it, it kept becoming more easy because because it was such a good product, it began flooding the marketplace in our general area. Oh. Um, so, you know, they reordered after the first week. So they were pushing through a decent amount of product and then the consumer talk. Um, so it seemed like each store that I had physically gone into, it was more and more, they, they had already heard about our product more and more. Oh, true. Um, so that really helped. Uh, the consumer push on a marketing standpoint was huge for us. Um, but to be able to utilize that first sale and have some sort of history to be able to sell on and say, you know, we're in a store, we're doing very well, here's the numbers, and, and here's what they're doing. Um, that made it much easier to, to gain the trust of our other clients. Uh, because we were self-manufacturing, you know, we were able to offer things like consignment where it was basically a risk-free trial to, to prove that our products were worthy of their store. Okay. Um, so really, we, we hit the ground running physically. Um, we did drive this to our website, but, you know, we couldn't afford pay-per-click. We couldn't afford Google AdWords. You know, even back then, Facebook wasn't regulated in our industry, but, you know, I just couldn't afford to do those kind of advertising. Mm -hmm. Um so it was amazing the power behind physically driving traffic to a website. So whether it's showing up person to person or making a phone call and from that phone call creating a call to action that much like is done online, um, the person to person connection that's been lost through the digital realm you know, still shows how strong it really is. Yep. So we were able to drive our traffic up from a physical standpoint which I think a lot of people overlook. You know, they pay a lot of money for internet marketing. They pay a lot of money for pay per click. Mm. Um, but it could be as simple as a thirty second phone call yes. that could create a massive new client and give them that trust. To then go look at your website because yeah. they have history behind it. You yeah. know, rather than just an advertisement that hopefully catches their yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's a voice in this. There's 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 yes. hopefully with passion, you know, be, be behind behind it. And and I suppose it's also down to the order value, you know, um, the the kind of deal you're trying to 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 get. Because I suppose you're you you're also looking mm -hmm. for when you picked up the phone, you're you're probably speaking to stores across the country, and you know trying to broker deals to so so they could you know go on a trial. Which which is fascinating. Which is really really yes. fascinating. Okay, um, so let's talk about your um, the the so um, so from a marketing standpoint, it was pretty much the product that sold itself. So so how much marketing did you do? How besides the the one to one, you know. Um, phone calls and um, going to stores, you know, to, to how much marketing did you start to do? Um, how, how diversified is, is your marketing? How many marketing channels do you have at the, at the moment? So um, we've just really started some of our, our, our mass marketing. Okay. Um, we, two months ago, we started a, a 12 month campaign with the largest vape magazine in the world. Wow. Um, but initially, Instagram was our key because we were able to build up our clientele base and be able to talk directly to consumers Okay, um, in which we built an affiliate program. So uh -huh. you could be, become part of our team. You can get a discounted rate for promoting our product. And through that, a lot of our affiliates would bring products to their current stores. Mm -hmm. So we created this back-end affiliate program that created army men, per se, on the ground. Um, in all over the world, you know, from from coast to coast, Malaysia, Europe, Canada, what, Pakistan. What was um, what was your what was your recruitment? What was your criteria for enlisting? Did you just take any affiliate on board that was interested, or did you sort of vet the um, the affiliates? 
Yeah, it was a very much vetting uh, process that we had set up, um, but it wasn't limited to just high profile people. Okay. So you didn't necessarily need to have 10,000 followers on Instagram, but if you had uh, interactive feed and you had passion, you know, we were looking more at the individual rather than their media portrayal per se. Okay. Uh, um, felt that you were a good fit and a good representation of the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, those were people that we wanted to get on board and we wanted to encourage because, you know, maybe they don't have such a huge media following, mm-hmm. but they're still respected in, in their own right. So we, and that was pretty much how we were looked at from the industry because we didn't have this massive backing. A lot of the big distribution companies did, didn't pick us up. And, you know, that was discouraging, but I mm-hmm. later then understood why it had to be that way because our product wasn't for those type of people. They were more mm-hmm. tailored towards the you know valuable individual that maybe doesn't have the largest following Mm. and through that we've created this family where you know affiliates intertwine with each other they get together they go to different events together Mm. and they have this common core in lifted Uh, so it's really created this kind of culture behind the product of people that might feel like an outcast or might feel like they didn't fit in Mm. you know everybody else Mm. so it's it's a tribe it's a it's a sub tribe now yes so so i'm 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 sensing a trend here, and it, it's it's very fascinating that all of your marketing thus far, correct me if I'm wrong, has been targeted to what recruiting clients or accounts at scale. So you're doing less of one-on-one marketing and more around how we're we going to find distributors to scale how are we going to find channels you know individual channels you know that have access to a base yeah so it's, is, is that right yeah very much so and you know we we respected the fact that each channel was different mm. um some smaller some bigger mm. and once again it came back to the balance that it creates okay. um so it You know, personally, I was kind of an outcaster kind of person. I just Mm. didn't really fit in with the normal mold. Mm. And it's really been reflected in our business. And it's, you know, it's amazing how many other people have that feeling. And it's brought us together in that sense. Um, But like like you said, yeah, it's really been more of a recruitment for individuals that feel the same way. Because a lot of... mm -hmm. Go go for it. No, I was just going to say rather than an actual physical product marketing. Yeah, you know, it, it really had nothing to do with e-liquids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, it's yeah, it, it's it, I wouldn't say spiritual, but um, I'd say it's it, it's really the the base really is the individual. It's it's really one to you. It's it's a tribe. There's a certain kind of person you're reaching out to, and this product happens to be common. It could have been another product, you know, mm-hmm. um, as an entrepreneur, but you, you, you found you're building out a, a unique, you know, people have something in common. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. Lifted is, you know, Lifted Liquids is more or less, um, I'll say, yeah, it's, it's auxiliary, it's, it's supplementary to, to the core, you know, to, to what brings them to, together. I hope I'm making sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. No, make all yeah. It's almost a spiritual moment in a sense, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Fantastic. Okay. So I, 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 I'm, I'm getting it now. So I'm on your, um, your Instagram page, and thirteen thousand nine hundred followers. I'm not even going to look at the followers. I'm looking at the, the, the storytelling here. It's, it's unique. I, I like the photographs. That they all stand out. Um, well, they all stand out very, they, they stand out. Okay. Let's talk about distribution. I'm on another website called ejuices.com, right? And and that, and they happen to, um, stock lifted liquids, which is your brand. Um, have you sort of also found several other, um, merchandising, e-commerce businesses that stock your products besides ejuices.com? 
So yeah, as I previously as discussed, um, you know, the big distribution channels weren't biting on our products. Um, yeah. So a- after we started kind of creating this movement, it gained some exposure um, and it, it added authenticity to our brand. Mm. From there, you know, we did get contacted by some of these large distributors who have brought us on board. Um, so you know, I understand how important it is to, to be linked up with some of these large platforms that have a lot of traffic. Uh, that's a big part behind Google Analytics and how you're ranked throughout their system. Mm. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of been this this giant goal to get in with these big distributors mm. and to do it through the process that we've done has been exciting because, you know, we didn't, once again, we didn't have the big venture capital. We didn't have massive marketing campaigns. We didn't have that exposure on, you know, your standard media per se. Um, it was kind of this underground movement that peaked its head up to the surface and, and started growing above the ground. <laughs> gotcha. 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 And so what is your run rates looking like now? I'm sorry? What's your run rates looking like now for 2016 in terms of revenue? For 2016, we're going to be about $1.2 million in revenue. Wow, so you're going to double. That, that's impressive. Really, really impressive. Okay, right. Um, Let's talk about like your future plans. Um, So in the niche segments of the market which is how you actually got started you, you you got started in you know what what i'll call you know you, you know um yeah the the niche yeah uh, you you've you've gained some ground and now um that has led into you know opportunities into the larger distribution channels what are your future plans to taking you know um lifted liquid to lift their manufacturing to so what are your plans revenue wise and um, from a scalability standpoint for the company? Yeah, so um, now that we've had the proper revenue, we've been able to branch out and do some of these large marketing campaigns like like magazine ads, um, like advertising on some of these larger platforms. And that's really helped uh, scale our business in other countries. You know, we're working on large deals in Europe, and my focus really now is the international marketplace, mm. uh, places like New Zealand, where you know it's a vir- it's a virgin marketplace. Their hardware is old technology. They've just now pulled the ban on nicotine sales. So, um, you know, my focus is going to some of these other regions that are a couple of years behind in the marketplace and introducing a far advanced product. Okay. Uh, places like Ukraine. Mm. Um, Russia. So our target now is to continue to expand in the United States because once again, there's an incredible amount of retailers and we found a good formula, but we really want to take this um, international and, and put our focus on international sales, which is really important in this time because, you know, we're, we have the FDA and the government overreaching on our industry, mm. regulating us um, and it's apparent that it's, you know, backed by big tobacco. Mm. Um, so to be able to focus on international marketplaces as well is, is very important because of the unknown here in the United States. Exactly. 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 Mm. It's, it's, you're, you're, you're hedging the risk basically, um, across the board. And, and there, there, there are two ways of expanding a, you know, a fledging business, um, either, you know, expand your, your product range, that way you still are exposed to the FDA and regulations in, in the States or you go international. And um, that's exactly what you're doing. So with regards to going international, what, what are your plans? Are you going to go to the countries yourself or are you going to look for representatives in the country who would then look for, for channels, for sub-channels? Um, what, what, is, what, what does the plan look like? Um, so the plan is interesting because it, it comes back to these small roots ideas that we had, um, the Instagram, the direct messaging individual consumers, uh, we're able to capture these people from all over the world. Wow. So when when they are an affiliate of our program and they get a discounted product and they get support, you know, they're, they want to do something with that. So they want to go to their local stores. They want to tell their friends about it because they're proud. You know, they're proud that they are part of something. Okay. Um, we've kind of lost that in 
in the competition of life mm. uh, where people feel more like you're competing with each other rather than you're on the same team. Mm. So we've been able to influence different marketplaces without having to fly across the, the world. Mm. Um, we've done some trade shows that we weren't present at, but our products were, and that helped stir up, you know, uh, once again, our product has always kind of spoke for itself. It mm. stand on its own. It didn't have a lot of hype behind it. It didn't have a lot of marketing behind it. It was a quality product. So if we could get it in the hands of a consumer to then bring to their store owners that their local shop is at, you know, what better person to sell your product than a customer? Yes. Um, so, so that's really helped in our cause of getting international by, you know, capturing these individuals via the great social media and, you know, influencing them to to take it physical and local rather than just re-promoting it on Instagram. Absolutely. No, take it to your local vape shop and, and see how they like it. Um, and if it's something that you like, well, then tell them that you'd love to buy it from them. Um, <laughs> so that's really worked out in our benefit to, once again, utilize these people that are on the ground in, in their specific local areas um, while still, you know, traveling and trying to make the proper connections ourselves. Sure. But it's given us the ability to, to scale that with – you know, minimal people involved. So how many countries are you currently selling in now besides the US? We've, we're in about 22 countries. Right, that, that's really, really impressive. And um, yeah, wish you the very best, um, you know, with the, with the continuous international expansion. It looks like it's working with um, a double in, in revenue year on year, two years in business, 1.2 awesome fantastic fantastic okay so um now i'd like us to go into what we call the lightning round i'd ask you three four questions and you can only answer with a sentence um so ready when you are let's go for it let's go for it let's go for it how do you hire people nick past experience past experience okay what are the three indispensable tools you use for managing your business Honesty, um, mm. openness, mm. and consistency. Okay, so those are values. Okay, okay. If you could, if there's one piece of advice you could give to e-tailers and product entrepreneurs listening to this show on how to two x or three x their business, their their, their 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 physical product businesses, what would it be? Sell. Sell. Okay. Sell. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's been this is the final one. What's been your best mistake to date? By that I mean a setback that's given you the biggest feedback. Working with friends. Working with friends. Okay. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Nick. It's been an absolute, absolute pleasure having you on the show. Um, and many, many thanks for sharing your journey. And I wish you the very, very best. Thank you, Kuno. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks again for giving me this opportunity. And it's uh, it's been great meeting you. And I, I look forward to further talking. All right, cheers. Guys, if you're still listening, if you're still here, um, one thing I'd like you to take on board from Nick's interview really is the fact that he'd been able to scale at the grassroots level and his, he'd been doing one-on-one -on -one marketing at the same time securing accounts, right? And scaling out and becoming, you know, working with distributors to, to actually get in his products on. So he picked up the phone. So don't say you don't have advertising dollars. He picked up the phone and he, 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 he got his customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis till was able to go into mass marketing. Now, that's what I took away from it. So thank you again, Nick. And, and cheers. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Cheers.